Well, I'm joined now from Cairo by Rachma Zain, whose powerful message has gone viral online. Rachma, thank you very much indeed for joining me. We've got a, a slight delay uh, in the connection between us, so I'm going to ask you uh, questions and give you time to answer them uh, rather than try and talk over you because that isn't going to work uh, given the delay. So let me just ask you, first of all, you, you, you were on CNN. I know Clarissa Ward, the correspondent that you were uh, very passionate towards. In, in my opinion, having worked at CNN, she is one of the best foreign correspondents in the world. And I felt uh, absolutely has tried to straddle uh, this very tricky line of reporting fairly and accurately on what is a, a horrendous conflict. Um, when you look back at yourself in that exchange with Clarissa, how do you feel about the way that you uh, addressed her? Do you have any regret? Or do you feel you could have expressed yourself differently? Or do you feel it, it accurately represented how you were feeling? I'm not going to waste my time talking about the report with Clarissa, uh, because this takes away from the point. You mentioned before there was a deadlock in the debate. There's no deadlock in the debate. There is terror in the debate. You are unable to debate with Israel, because what's happened so far is we're witnessing the sick relationship between the United States and Israel, where basically uh, the United States has given uh, a permission for Israel to uh, have genocide on ground. And what's happened is we're seeing uh, no one can say no to Israel. The United Nations isn't able to say no to Israel without repercussions. Uh, media, in, media figures aren't able to say no to Israel without, uh, without repercussions. So what ends up happening is that you're basically raising a spoiled brat you're unable to say no to that has now grown up to be a sociopath. And let me reiterate that the yeah. relationship between yeah. the United States and Israel is putting the world in jeopardy. So what we're witnessing now is a, a, a serious issue where both parties need to reassess their relationship. I understand that Biden, because he's pitted his own people against each other and wasted billions of dollars uh, giving them to Israel instead of looking at his own homeless, his own medical uh, care issue, his own student loans issue. So a lot of American people are also extremely angry and they're also looking at yeah. unfair coverage. The reason this video has gone so viral one, it's alarming that it's gone so viral because what should be going viral is the footage that we are witnessing out of Palestine, out of the occupied yeah. territories of children being massacred. It's not a war. A war assumes that both parties are on equal footing. Yeah. OK. She's right. I hear you. She's uh, right. What I would say in response to that uh, is that on October the 7th, of Hamas, course, who are the ruling authority October in the Gaza, 7th committed an act of such heinous terrorism, killing 1,500 people, including 260 people okay, at the music festival. Okay, in 1948, festival. No, let me we finish, Rachma, the Let me finish. What happened let me just then? Ask, uh, let what me about just say, the militia? Rachma, let me, no, let me no, just ask I, you the I, question. I, I'm, I'm really... I'm, I'm, no, no, you have to let me ask a question. I, I've been very polite to you and respectful. Ask. I've let you have your say. I'm going to say something now to you, and you can respond. Bear That's in mind there's interview. a delay, so this isn't exactly the easiest debate to have. Well, that's why I said at the start, why don't we let me ask questions, you answer them, and that's the way this can proceed in a respectful manner. I would simply say to you ask. that I've had a number of pro-Palestinian voices on this programme in the last two weeks um, and a number of uh, pro-Israel voices. Many of the pro-Palestinian people I've had on have been very quick to condemn what Hamas did on October the 7th. Some have not. What's your position? Before we get to what you just said to me about what Israel has done and what America is doing and so on, what is your view as someone in Egypt about what happened right on your border there in Gaza uh, by Hamas against Israel? It's a very fair question. But the thing is, maybe I have a privilege being so close to the border, having many Palestinian friends, uh, knowing more history, uh, that I understand that once you oppress a people, and again, I'm not justifying what happened. The killing of civilians on both parts ought to be condemned. But the danger in you starting an interview, asking me to condemn Hamas, then pours into Israel's 
blind def defense of its own state, which ends up killing over 5,000 Palestinians, over 700 dead. And going back to the report that you were discussing at the beginning with the CNN reporter, the mm. issue with that is everything is always taken out of context. And this is the issue we have with Western media. Had the journalist uh, been there on ground with the volunteers that night, as for example I was, she would have listened to the bombardment of Israeli uh, bombs that start from 2.30 a.m. and do not stop. She would have but also witnessed you, the fact that Barack, we would get an okay from Israel's side. I'm not done. Uh, from Israel's side that the supplies would go in and then it's like they toy with your morale so that you, for hope from both sides is stopped. The narrative has got to change. Okay, the idea. I, 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 for example, I don't have a, the PR of Israel. I don't have the money to, uh, mm. to, to hire the Justin Beavers of the world and, and, and have them say, pray for Israel and whatnot. But what I do have is the truth. And the reason this video has gone so viral is because people felt it. People felt okay, that it was Let me ask a, a question, Rachma. So my question is this. When Hamas did what they did on October the 7th, they will have known, absolutely known, that Israel's response would have been this. And it would have involved yeah. the deaths of many thousands of innocent people in Gaza as a consequence of going after Hamas. It's, it's the same. It's, you cannot say, you just say that because... Uh, Israel is gonna kill people like like it's gonna kill smaller portion amount over like 20 days 30 days two months five months yeah and still get this number or somebody will do something and it will get the world attention and Israel of course is gonna kill a large amount of people in just one day so the same the, the two options are the same and uh, yeah but at least there's one with one option i think that's what they were that's what they were going for like the people to know what's happening you know i think that i don't know they will have known that so my question for you again a difficult question i appreciate this given that you're right there in the middle of all this but the difficult question is how do regular Palestinian people feel that their ruling authority commit an act of terror so heinous and they must have known how Israel would respond and they must have known that many thousands of innocent Palestinians would die as a consequence of that terror attack? How do they feel about that? Are they comfortable with Hamas continuing to be the ruling authority in Gaza? Or is it actually an act of such appalling atrocity well that Hamas should no longer be there and if if the answer is the Palestinian people don't want them to be there anymore then how do you get rid of them unfortunately the Palestinian people don't have the luxury of the time to think of Hamas the 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 voice notes we're receiving from our Palestinians Palestinian brothers and sisters from under the rubble from uh, mothers who've lost their children, from home families that have been eradicated. The, the sentiment we're getting from the Palestinian people is, do they see us? If the United Nations, that's whole premise was to avoid this kind of genocide, was created to avoid this kind of humanitarian crisis, cannot stand up to one spoiled brat of a fascist organization, then where are we in this world? And what's sad is that it's a top-down movement. You have the United Nations unable to speak to Israel. You also have the, the, the people at work who cannot hold the Palestinian flag, who get fired on the spot. I've had people who work in New York text me and tell me that they've been fired okay, on the spot. Right, I have a you question. know what else I've had that I unfortunately I cannot show? Screenshot, I'm last thing, screenshots of emails from, from prominent news channels where anchors, where um, younger people are, are emailing, producers begging, are emailing one another begging, why aren't we showing the other side? Why aren't you showing the other side? 
Because what's happened is that well, I have to be able to Israel has given you a brand book where you can, so that you can be prim and proper in front of your no, own no, people. No, no, I have to be able to respond, They've been very Rachma. clear about their intent. They've been Rachma. very clear since the Haganah. You have to let me respond now, OK? I'm listening to you respectfully. I am not the media. I've given more of a platform to pro-Palestinian people, including yourself, than every any other... Every interview is going to say that. Come on, dude. If you're going to do something good, just don't brag about it every interview. Come on. ...show in the world. So I resent the suggestion that I'm just like everybody else. Which is I have in itself a problem. Given, I have deliberately given large chunks of my show each night to voices like yours, to tell the side of the Palestinians. But again, I come back to this. You talk about genocide by Israel against Palestinian people. What do you call the Hamas stated intent? They've made no secret of it. It's their stated intent to wipe Israel off the face of the earth, to kill all Jews. And that's exactly what we saw them try to do on October the 7th. What do you call that if it's not genocide? But you've seen that from the other side. You know, it's interesting because this point brings one to be called and dubbed anti-Semitic. You know, I believe that Israel is the most anti-Semitic entity ever. We used to live with our Jewish brothers and sisters yeah. here in the Middle East and in Palestine. And the creation of Israel on a racist premise differentiated because you, had, you didn't have... Uh, uh, Jewish Arabs or whatnot. You just had Arabs. They were Christian. They were the people of Palestine. You're not answering they were my Christian. question. Rachman. They were Muslim. Uh, they were Jewish. I don't need to because the problem is the. Actually, the, you do what, need why to. Why are we having a debate? Is it not to solve, or is this for another sensational interview? Is this a sensational no, interview, it's or not is about it sensation. to solve? I am you've here accused, to say you've accused Israel of that genocide. We need a ceasefire because the world is in danger. I well, have accused I would say, Israel of genocide. I am yes, accusing Israel and of I'm genocide. Simply saying this to is you, a genocide. And they I'm have simply said saying it's a genocide. Rachma, I hear you, and you're perfectly entitled to that view, although Israel would contest that characterization of what they have been doing, but many okay. would agree with you. But I simply say, what is Hamas waging against Israel? I would love if they genocide? would contest with evidence rather than terror. Yeah. yeah but do, do you not agree with me that what I Hamas is doing is clearly... Do you not agree with me that clearly what Hamas is waging against Israel is also genocide by your criteria? I am, I am, you know what's, again, again, this is a dangerous uh, debate because what you're trying to put me in is once I condemn Just asking this, a question. Uh, this, once I condemn these people, what that then means, what is, why is this dangerous for me? Because what that then means is that you can then answer me and tell me that Israel has the unequivocal right to defend itself, which what, mean, which what that means is that they eradicate a people who no, end no, up no, being no, your no, Halloween no, no, you're wrong. No, no. So why not clarify. put a stop to this Let now? They're not on equal footing. Let me clarify. Israel, like every country in the world, clarify. has an absolute yes, right to clarify. defend itself. Right? Israel has a right to defend itself. The question now is Against what is what? a proportion... women and children? Let me, let me is, finish my point, is, please, Rachma. Look at the evidence. Let me how finish many, my how point. How many Palestinians have died? If you're not going to let me finish my point, you're not going to hear what I have to say. Israel has a right to defend itself. But the longer this war goes on, the more that people are, are saying to Israel, what is proportionate? How can killing many thousands of Palestinians, innocent women and children, how can that be right? If, if what happened October the 7th is wrong, how can this be right? And it's yeah. a very fair point to make. But my point about all of this is you want peace, I want peace. The President of the United States and Queen Rania and others saying we've got to get to a two-state solution. To do that, you've got to have leadership which can be trusted by the other side. There is no way that Israel will ever trust any leadership involving Hamas. By the way, nobody was going to uh, trust Israel. So, yeah. Yeah, well, once you you have to, to get uh, trusted uh, governments on the both sides, okay? Because Israel has been doing what it's doing for, for oh my God, how many years, okay? It's not only against Palestine. It starts firing missiles against uh, Syria, against Iraq, against uh, uh, Lebanon. 
so it's not just doing this to Palestine, okay? So, yeah. And I would say the same, by the way, about uh, the Palestinian view I'm of sorry. Benjamin Netanyahu. I don't think they trust him either. I think you need new leadership on both sides. Yeah. And, and that's where the conundrum's going to be. How do you get to that place where it's no longer Hamas controlling Pal Palestinians and no longer Benjamin Netanyahu in charge of the Israeli side? Excellent question. You apply international law. You apply international law. You allow the United Nations to do its job. When, when, when the Hamas situation happened, for example, it was supposed to be the Red Cross to go and negotiate. Israel is, is stopping all of that. On top of that, it's also terrorizing the media. On top of that, it's also terrorizing individuals. On top of that, it has money being poured in from the United, Nation, from the United States. On top of that, it has the backing of the European Union. On top of that, it has the backing of Britain that started this whole farce. So what ends up happening is who's speaking for the Palestinian people. So for a solution to happen, you need to empower the United Nations so that Israel is not making a mockery of the United Nations. How am okay. I needing to reiterate this more and more? I am giving you a solution. Rachma, you're giving me your and solution. And you're still telling me Hamas. Rachma, you've there just given me... There will always be Hamas if you occupy a people. Let me just finish this point. Let me just finish this point. If you occupy a people, mm -hmm. if you occupy a people, if uh, women in labor are having to give birth at checkpoints, if you're having uh, people imprisoned, if you're having this merciless bombardment of Palestinians, you are going to breed Hamas. It starts yeah. with the stronger party. Yeah, he's right. Rakhma, I've given you uh, a long amount of time. And this today. is why hope... the, the jargon is dangerous. OK, I hear you, and I respect your right to your opinions, and I've given you the platform to air them, and I appreciate you coming on the programme. Call for Thank a ceasefire, then. That's not my job. My job is to try and interview people at the centre of this. You may not like that, but it is. But I appreciate you coming Have on the programme. Thank you. interviews, sure. I it wasn't sensational. It wasn't. But thank you very much. She's, she's, she's a badass. I like her. I like her. She has, she has points. She has points to make. And she did a very good job in, in that. She did a very, very good job. Because there's I've seen a lot of people going on interviews. And they... They just didn't, they didn't feel right right now. It, it felt right. And by the way, she is right. She is right. Once, like, uh, what Israel has been doing, always going to be Hamas. You know, always, like, maybe it's not the same name, but it always going to be some force is going to do something like what Hamas did because of what Israel has been doing all these years. So you need a, 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 a universal or international solution. But the, the, the problem is... Israel has uh, a power over the United Nations. I don't know how. I don't know how. I think, I think that everybody, everybody thinks like, oh well, America is the strongest country in the world, or Russia, or China, or something. I don't think that. I think Israel. Yeah, because I don't know how, but it got all these people under their like palm of the hand like just like, like America is going to do whatever it takes just to just to make Israel safe and uh, Britain and all these countries are gonna, yeah it is very bad and uh, yeah it's not going to be fair to get the United Nation because it's it's going to be for Israel you know so I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know really I don't know yeah Anyway, this is the video for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it.